Welcome to the 2023 Blade Show. We're with Carter Cutlery, and we had fun visiting him two years ago. We've got these two gentlemen, we've got Taylor, and we've got Aaron. They're working the booth today. They brought specific knives. If you know me, I love Japanese steel, white steel, blue steel. These guys know how to work it. They're gonna tell us what they brought to the show. They're gonna tell us what they've got going on. I'm gonna let you guys share with the world what's going on at Carter Cutlery booth today. All right. Well, we got a lot of kitchen knives uh, here. I'm gonna just uh, put that on you. All our, all our kitchen knives are white steel core on the table. Uh, we got a few from me, a few from Aaron, and a few from Murray. This is one of Murray's international pros, kind of his top of the line with uh, nickel Damascus cladding, white steel core, the walnut handle, and a brass bolster. Well, that's and that's one of the only ones I see at the table with the Western style. With the Western style handle, yeah. One of the knives I'm most proud of is in terms of kitchen knives is this is this is my knife. Suji Hiki. Yeah, it's a, a Suji. Yep, exactly. The, it's got a Dichrolam caps on the front and back. Now, is this a cladded? And like, this stainless this, steel this is a stainless steel clad white white steel core. Is the Suji Hiki a new shape for either one of you, or it's it's not a new shape for me. It's one of my favorite knives to forge. I enjoy the challenge of it. Uh, it's straightening and keeping it straight throughout the process is, can be a challenge, and I just en I just enjoy the long, uh, sleek look of them. Um, Aaron, you want to show a couple of yeah. the knives you got? Yeah, I'm probably this is a Guto that I made. I'm excited about that one. Dyed maple uh, handle, same 410 uh, stainless steel cladding with Hitachi White number one core and uh, G10 liners. So your claim to fame as an organization is the heat treat. I mean, you start with the heat treat, you get that crystalline structure, that fine grain structure. You get, so a person might purchase some Hitachi steel, mess it up in the heat, they can't get that fine edge because they didn't do it. So your claim to fame is, first we treat the steel right, yeah. and then from there we apply the aesthetics. You want to let us know about how important that is to the knife makers and to, and to someone else? Absolutely. Tonight? Yeah, so one of the things that we really pay close attention to, even before heat treat, is the heat right from the very beginning, and that's the heat when you're forging the knife. Uh, we, we take care careful care to heat not heat the knife too hot during forging and then heat the knife at lower and lower temperatures with each sequential heat and that's something that's commonly known among Japanese bladesmiths and then from there um, we're, we're heat treating uh, we're doing a water quench on these and we believe what the water quench pulls out the full hardness of the knife and that's why we're that's why we're really known for our screaming sharp edges, our scary sharp edges. We're um, also doing it all by eye. Um, in, as far as heat treating, we're we're so doing like all the of color it. Color of the, yep. the color of Turn the off the lights, and we're doing it all by eye. All right. So another thing, I've heard Bob Kramer talk about um, ni liquid nitrogen quenching. That's something more in the American steels, maybe not yep. in Japanese. You don't have to deal with that. But I don't think people understand how it's easy to maybe crack or lose if you get it wrong and you go from hot to water anybody's ever taken something very hot and put it in something very cold can suddenly yeah so prices can go up with lost batches of course you're trying yes. not to lose a batch a lot of japanese uh blades japanese bladesmithing philosophy is always about pushing the boundaries so on a water quench, that's a severe medium. To, it cools down the knife fast, but it also pulls out the full hardness. So through the whole process, even while we're, we're forging down to thickness, as thin as we dare when forging, pushing the boundary, we're quenching it in water, pushing the boundary, and then grinding them as thin as we dare. And that's what's producing uh, our high-performing knives. Can I ask, for those who don't know, what is the price point that we could expect to see from a Carter Cutlery knife, whether it's from him or from you guys? Like, what are we looking at? So we're looking at anything from you know twenty eight hundred on the high on the high end on the on the uh, international pros, and 
down to you know something smaller like a petty knife. Uh, I got a couple petty knives on the table here, and those are like in the three hundred dollar range. Okay, and is that a mono steel itself? No, that no, that's clad? still that is still clad, and it still has a Hitachi white steel core. It's clad in stainless in this case instead of Damascus. Okay. Now, in terms of outdoor knives, kind of we have the same variation in, in price. Go ahead. I don't know how far her camera will go, but go ahead and show us what you do. And. Uh, one differing steel we have here it's a variant of white steel this is this is blue super i am the biggest blue super fan i like blue super for outdoor knives because of the increased wear resistance and yes. corrosion and resistance yeah yes. exactly in this case this isn't stainless clad this is uh clad with 1035 spring steel which does have a little bit of carbon in it now is it is it one or both of you that are making more of the hunter style knives? Uh, uh, all three of us. So Murray, me, and Aaron all make uh, outdoor knives as well. We're okay. most known for kitchen knives. Okay. So everything we're going to see is carbon once again, but stain cladded. Yes. So yes. This is going to be exposed to the elements, moisture, things like that, whether we stab it in the tree, whether it's in the ground, whether we're gutting a fish or an animal, it's constantly exposed to moisture. Right. Okay. Are we sticking with mostly the blues in the hunter, blue steel in the hunter? Not, no, now not necessarily. A lot of the, most of the outdoor knives we make are still the white number one, and we just love that steel because where it where it triangulates with three qualities that we appreciate most from knives. That's sharpness. That's what white one is known for more than anything else. And then uh, the the two other qualities, and one is the most overlooked, and that's sharpenability. The white number one is just so easy to get a razor sharp, sharp edge back on in it really in minimal time. One of the lowest best BESS for those of the best certified scores I've ever gotten is on my white number one. And again, that particular company, I'm sure that since they're a top company, they had a good heat treat. But I always wonder, since my best score with them was like a 24, yeah, yeah. you know, I was like, I wonder if me get, not getting lower is on me. Or was it on their heat treat? Right. You know, yeah. and I, I'll always yeah. ask that. So I've also even said in a restaurant, there's certain foods that I want to taste for the first time from the best chef. Because if I don't like it, I know I had the best chef. And I've always felt like if I ever got a hold of one of these Carter Cutlery knives, white number one, and I couldn't get a low score, that's on me. Because I already know that you guys already baked that in the oven the best it could possibly be done. We appreciate you taking the time. Has this year's show been a good show for you so far? Yeah, it's, it's been, been a fantastic great. show. This we is never, my first uh, year. So we never see a large culinary <laughs> presence. We have to hunt them out because we tend to specialize on culinary knives. Um, this is the largest culinary knife presence I've seen at the show. But you guys have always been there, and we appreciated you being a part of our show two years ago. We appreciate you today being a part of the show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. And I still look forward to owning one of these knives at some point. It won't be today. We spent a whole lot of money already. <laughs> but um, we appreciate you guys. Best of luck. Yeah. Thank you. Stay tuned on our show for more content from Blade Show 2023.